Hello, my creative second graders. Today we are going to be making this cute little fish that looks like I just caught it from out of the sea. Boys and girls, you are going to be using your air dry clay. Make sure that you also have a pencil or something to scratch your clay with and also a cup of water. The first step to making our fish is that we need to separate the clay into enough sections to have eyes and fins as well as the whole body. For our clay, we're going to give just a pinch of the clay off to the side for the eyes and the fin. Then with the other bit of our clay, we need to make a giant slab. When we make a slab, you start by rolling the clay into a sphere. Then, taking the palm of your hand, press the clay down into a flat pancake. When we're making a slab, it's extra important to put down on the table a piece of cloth or paper even to help the clay not stick to our table. If we're using a slick table, the clay may get stuck and be kind of hard to peel off. Boys and girls, I'm using my whole body weight to press the clay down into a flat slab. It helps to stand up out of your chair and lean your body over top of your clay to get your whole body weight to help you get the clay flat. Once your clay looks like an actual pancake, we want it to be nice and thick and fluffy. We are then going to start by shaping where we will combine the clay to make our dumpling or taco shape. So we are going to draw a U on our clay with our pencil scratching. Scratch, scratch, scratch all the way around until you have made a nice U for your clay. This is the area where we will combine to make the spine or the fins of our fish and we will have the open mouth here on this side. Before I pinch my clay into the dumpling, what I like to do first is take a little bit of water and rub to smooth the lips of my fish. Once I've smoothed my clay, I also need to take a bit of water and wet the areas that I've scratched to make sure my fish stays nice and closed up. Now, just like making a dumpling, take and pinch all the areas that you have scratched and added water to. But don't close the dumpling all the way. We need to leave a nice space open for the mouth of our fish so he looks like he's gulping. Then, while I'm working on pinching, I can also take and sculpt my fish's bottom fin by press, press, pressing right here. Don't press too hard though. We don't want the tail to come off. Laying my fish on his side, I can also take my pencil and press to make fin marks. You can do this on both sides. Gently press your pencil to indent and make the fin texture. Something I also like to do is on the top of my fish, I can take my pencil and press down to create the ridges of the top of the fin. Then taking my fingers, I can maybe pinch them to be pointy or leave them curved like they were. It's up to us how we create our sea creature. Okay, boys and girls, I have gotten the body of my taco fish, my dumpling fish, made up, and now it's time to add the fins and the eyes. I'm gonna start with the fins. Good thing I took some clay off to the side to ensure I had a little bit of extra to make these different parts. Now you'll notice my fish only has one fin. Oopsies, I think one fell off. But you can see that the fin is kind of a little bit of a pressed shape. 
So taking the clay in my hands, ooh, I feel like I should maybe parcel out how much clay I want for each thing. So I've got two fins. Maybe I'll make really large eyes to make him look like he's shocked that he got caught. Now for the fin, take and roll your clay into a ball and press it down with your thumb. Then you can take and tap, tap, tap the side that is not being held by your thumb. This makes a really nice fin shape that I can then add to the side of my fish. I'm going to attach the fin right to the edge here. And remember, whenever you attach clay, you always need to scratch and add water. This is called slipping and scoring. A next step that helps even more to merge the clay together so that they stick is taking your finger and swiping the clay together. Once I've done this part, I can also go back with my pencil to add those fin marks again. Ooh, he looks like a fast swimmer. Let's do the other side, repeating those steps. So I've already taken my ball of clay. Now pinch with my finger, my thumb, and tap, tap, tap with my other side of my hand, creating that fin shape. Now. Gently roll your fish to the other side. Scratch where you need to attach it. Scratch to attach. <laughs> and add some water. The water acts like our glue and the scratching makes it so it doesn't slip off. Swiping that clay together onto the fish helps to extra attach those pieces. When I'm working with clay, one of my favorite things to do is adding textures and patterns. So something I can do as well is I can take my pencil and maybe I need to add some gills or I can even use the bottom of it to create some fish scales. But before I go any further, I think I need to attach the last part. While my clay is still wet, it's most helpful to get everything attached. If you feel like your clay is getting a little bit dry, rework that clay with some water. That will help those pieces to feel sticky and attach nicely and stay stuck onto the body of your fish. Now I want my eyes to be nice and big and bulging, but one thing that helps me make sure they're secure is while I'm attaching my eyes, I put my other finger on the inside of the lip of my fish and press with my thumb on the other side. So I'm taking both fingers and pressing from inside and outside together. Let's do the other one. Scratch. Add water. And press from both sides. Last detail, I'm going to give my fish some eyeballs. Maybe a really deep hole for the inside one. Notice how I'm using my tools, both my hand tools, but also just the simple tool of a pencil to make the other shapes. Okay, boys and girls, my fish is complete. And now I should let it dry for a few days before I add color to it. Like I said before, if you'd like, you can even explore adding textures to the outside of your fish. And boys and girls, if you don't have any color at home, you can always feel free to bring your clay pieces back to school when we return to paint them here. If you have extra clay, please make sure that you always put it inside of an airtight bag so that the clay stays wet so that you can work with it next time. Now, make sure to wash up your station and wait patiently for your clay to dry. Have fun, boys and girls.